Thank you, everyone, for coming. Good evening, and welcome to our 101st annual awards ceremony of the Armed Services Y San Diego. And I heard someone say, you know, last year we had our event at the amazing building at 500 West Broadway, and this year, of course, uh, we're we're on Zoom. So, you know, I want to. Um, we got a, a lot of stuff in front of us, so let's get started. And uh, I just want to. You know, we're, we're honored and joined, of course, by Chaplain Munez Valle of the USS Abraham. Come to enjoy not only volunteering, but also bringing some of my sailors over uh, to the Armed Services YMC out there in Murphy Canyon. So. It uh, when Dan uh, asked me to do the invocation, it was a, it was certainly a no-brainer, right? So, thank you certainly for what you all do, and also for the invitation uh, tonight. So, having said that, would you please join me in this prayer according to your faith tradition? Oh, gracious and heavenly God, we pause and bow our heads before you to humbly ask your blessings, and to give thanks for the goodness you have shown to us, to assist us to overcome our human weaknesses and our community needs, you have urged us to feed the hungry and to give drink to the thirsty and to aid the poor and needy. May your blessings be graciously bestowed upon the Armed Services YMCA and upon those who have accepted in such a special way the fulfilling of your admonitions. Remember, especially in your love, these volunteers who give so much of their time and, and talent to your service and, of course, to our fellow service members. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Chaplain. Thank you, Chaplain. I just want to take a moment and acknowledge um, our board of directors our advisory board, our emeritus members who are here with us tonight, and especially our Gray Eagles. And if you don't know the Gray Eagles, um, we have two. Uh, Miles Harvey and Judge Gill are the Gray Eagles of this organization. And those are, um, those are our board members um, who are longstanding and our senior, most senior, those are our true guides. And of course, our emeritus members, um, but also our employees. I guess I should stand up if I'm long. <laughs> if you can stand, please stand. Feel, feel <laughs> free. Uh, so, um, and also we see all of you as our honored guests tonight. It's, it's often the case at ceremonies such as this, we'll call out our VIPs. And for us, our VIPs are, are on, the, on the line or on the Zoom with us tonight. So thank you for being here and welcome. Um, that said, we're going to go ahead and show you a short video. Anna will go ahead and present that for us. The Armed Services YMCA believes that when a service member enlists, the whole family serves, and being a military family comes with unique challenges. I feel like the organization does something amazing for the military. They help us out when times are tough, and they put a smile on our faces, and they're always there to lend a helping hand. Founded in 1920, the Armed Services YMCA San Diego provides support through family and youth enrichment, warrior care, and military family events. As a stay-at-home mom with two kids, events like this where they can burn off energy is just amazing and it's it's so fun to meet other people and other moms and other military members that are here and make their lifelong friends as we move state to state. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, the ASY San Diego transitioned to a drive through food distribution center, serving more than 90,000 meals, online programs, and telehealth services. Armed Services YMCA, thank you so much for everything you do. You're a blessing before, but especially during quarantine. It's so nice knowing we have the extra food. All right, Anna, go ahead and bring us back. <laughs> it's fine. 
Um, miss you guys. It's really, really helpful, and we are so appreciative of you every time, but especially during this hard quarantine time. Thank you so much. So Fox 5 San Diego is a wonderful media organization that really supports the Armed Services YMCA, but more importantly, our military here in San Diego. They understand that it's a small community of donors and supporters that all wrap their hands around our military who protect our freedoms each and every day. And 4th of July, Independence Day, is one more opportunity to pause, to pause to unite our families and to embrace who we are as a country and celebrate <laughs> our freedom. As our world changes, so will the Armed Services YMCA San Diego to adapt and evolve to changing needs of our military community. Our goal is to continue to improve our family youth enrichment program offerings to include the Horse of the Sun Ranch, Operation Little Learners, Op Hero, After School Achievement Academy, as well as counseling services, Warrior Care Initiative at our Navy Medical Center, San Diego and all the many things we do here for community events at the Armed Services YMCA to strengthen our military family. I am definitely grateful for the opportunity to serve and uh, the ability to serve my country and good people here within it. I am so thankful as always to the ASYMCA for everything that they do for our families. I love what the Armed Services YMCA is doing for us. Armed Services YMCA has got it right, making military life a little bit easier. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. <laughs>
that every one of our programs are both viable and executable and provide tremendous value um, to our service members and their families. During the time of the last year um, on COVID, um, you know, it, it is remarkable to think that um, virtually every one of our programs um, were executed in fashion that not only enhanced sailor, soldier, sailors, and airmen, Marines lives, but made possible the opportunity for those individuals to see some relief um, in areas that were not being provided in areas elsewhere. And I think that the dedication um, of the staff is remarkable, um, as well as, um, again, the support of each of the board members. Um, getting to the point where um, board members like Larry, Larry and, and Kathy and others provide their personal support to making sure that uh, program staff is supported um, and all of that, it, just is, it is remarkable. And I, again, I want to thank you very much. I'd like to break from um, one bit because again, over the past 20 years, almost 20 years now, um, been involved with the armed service in particular San Diego Y. This is a perfect opportunity um, for the next president, Daryl, um, to take this role because of the professional prowess that he brings to the office in this very critical point in time in which we need to deal with some of the issues that we've been dealing with over the course of the last 10 years in a much more deliberate but legal fashion. Um, and there are some aspects that while I can provide guidance, my, my professional and expertise does not, or not, does not reside in that area. So I think it's, it's very fitting. Um, and I know Daryl, you're gonna do an absolutely superb job um, in providing that counsel um, to this group making sure that we solve some of these problems that we've been wrestling with. Um, and now with that, um, I also would like to um, just take a moment if we could, um, and that is um, in recognition of um, an Armed Services Y member who many of you uh, worked with through the years, um, but that is um, November, we, um, we learned that um, Linda Reba um, had passed. And I just wanna take a moment um, of silence um, for Linda um, and recognize her contributions to the organization. Um, both she and Mike um, were instrumental in so many different ways. Um, and I, I just wanna make sure that she's recognized um, with a moment of silence. Okay, moving on. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Herring. Dan will now lead us uh, in recognition of our Military Volunteer of the Year. Got the unmute, sorry. Let me get him off to come over here. <laughs> So good evening, everyone. Uh, you know, obviously 2020 was a challenging year for all of us, and, and we're more than grateful to the 605 individuals who, uh, who volunteered with us uh, through the year. They gave us a total of 7,300 hours uh, delivering essential programs and services to families throughout the year. And tonight, we'd like to recognize two of those volunteers. Um, the first is uh, HM1 Roberto Garcia, um, hospital department, uh, first class. Uh, he's part of our military volunteer program and the military volunteer program provides opportunities for active duty service members to be involved in the community where they're stationed through volunteerism. And Petty Officer Garcia uh, fully embraced giving back to his community. Uh, he's been with us since August of 2018 and this year he's donated over 54 hours on uh, 13 separate occasions throughout 2020. When the pandemic hit early in uh, March, April, Petty Officer Garcia was really integral in establishing, organizing and running our new weekly food distribution event that we created. Um, he provided critical behind the scenes support to our special events manager. He helped recruit and train other volunteers. 
And of course, he distributed the groceries to feed the, the active duty military families that uh, were in need. He's also supported uh, some of our other events, such as suits and ties for service members. And he's helped out at the ranch, uh, just doing some general chores out there. He's enthusiastic each time he volunteers with us. He's bright, cheerful, and has a ton of energy, it has a positive effect on our volunteers. And we could not be more proud to have him in our program. He leads by example. He's a credit to the community and to the Armed Services YMCA San Diego. So congratulations, Petty Officer Garcia. And then our second uh, volunteer that we would like to recognize uh, is our Civilian Volunteer of the Year, Cher McBreetree. Uh, Cher uh, joined us uh, relatively recently in August, or excuse me, September 2019, but she's been a tireless supporter of us uh, ever since. Um, she donated an incredible 78 and a half hours of service in 2020, and a good chunk of that was down at Naval Medical Center um, in uh, the neonatal intensive care unit providing care to the, the infants there. She goes in and holds the child in the absence of the, the parent providing that essential human contact uh, that's required for the development and growth of the, the, the infant. Um, the staff love her up there. She's got a ton of uh, compassion and empathy and uh, Again, the, the staff and the families uh, value her, her support alike. When the pandemic hit and, and the um, hospital decided to suspend its volunteer program, she stepped up in another way and decided to, to help us out with our neighborhood exchange and, and youth lunch program, food distribution events, and even our back to school supplies events. So, you know, with her experience in each of these events, she's allowed, uh, it's allowed her to be a coach and guide new volunteers at events. And again, her, her selfless dedication to our families is both a credit to herself, the community, and again, we're proud to have her as a volunteer. So congratulations, Cher. Thank you, Dan. And just, uh, yes, everyone, a round of applause for our Volunteers of the Year. <laughs> I think everyone might be muted. So anyways, thank you. And thanks to thanks to Dan Zeller. Uh, you do the, the single. Uh, from, Woo! One single clap. <laughs> We're doing the best we can with the Zoom situation. So um, I do want to acknowledge Dan Zeller, um, now a director at the organization. Fantastic. It's hard to select the volunteer, the military volunteer and civilian volunteer of the year. We have so many amazing volunteers. It's extremely moving. Um, even today, as I went to the office, I saw one of our volunteers and our family youth enrichment who gives so much to our programs and services. So thank you, Dan, and thank you to our volunteer. Congratulations. Um, we'll now move on to the Vice Admiral St. George Award presented by Philip Samuelie. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. I'm honored to uh, be presenting this next award, the Vice Admiral St. George Award. This next award was named after Vice Admiral William Ross St. George, who was an active board member here at the Armed Services YMCA San Diego from 1980 to 1994. Uh, Vice Admiral St. George was a staunch supporter of the mission of Armed Services YMCA, who knew the value of dedication, hard work, and as a result, helped advance the organization rich in character and integrity. This prestigious award honors organizations who have shown exceptional dedication and commitment to this work. And as such, the Vice Admiral St. George Award is not one that is presented every year. This recipient must have demonstrated a long-term interest and commitment to the Armed Services YMCA San Diego and its mission. We are honored to be able to recognize an organization this year for their exceptional work. This year's honoree has supported Armed Services YMCA San Diego for over a decade and supported the work with local military families and wounded warriors for close to two decades. This year's honoree continues the legacy of its founders by encouraging and promoting health, science research, assisting with programs that benefit youth, underprivileged individuals, and sports-related activities, primarily in San Diego County. Today's honoree is a private foundation that was founded in 1997 
and was founded by the chief executive officer of a San Diego-based market leader in national defense and mass transportation. Over the past decade, this organization has worked closely with the Armed Services YMCA San Diego, supporting programs and service opportunities for active duty military and partnering with us in raising more than $350,000. So that, that's pretty incredible. Toward programming for families and children of active duty military families in San Diego. So please join me in thanking a tremendous supporter of Armed Services YMCA San Diego and a proud partner in strengthening our military family. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Vice Admiral St. George Award goes to the Walter J. and Betty C. Zabel Foundation. So unfortunately, Warren, who is the uh, current, Warren Miguel, who is the current president, wouldn't, couldn't be with us tonight, but he did share a few words uh, and I quote, thank you Armed Services YMCA San Diego for this honor and opportunity to continue the legacy of our founders in building on a lifetime of community philanthropy. So thank you, Zabel Foundation, for your kind support for, for over a decade. So that's amazing. All right, I also have the honor of presenting the Community Partner of the Year Award. Since its founding in 1936, our next honoree has worked to offer members of the U.S. military exceptional services across the nation. They continue to recognize our service members and their families' important service to our country with special programs and service options, whether they are deployed domestically or abroad, in peacetime or in times of conflict. This year's honoree is always committed to providing members of the military the service and respect that they deserve. For the past two decades, this honoree has worked closely with Armed Services YMCA San Diego, supporting the many programs, services, and the Armed Services YMCA mission that helps ease the many unique challenges of military life. This honoree not only provides financial support to the Armed Services YMCA San Diego, but they are often found volunteering and providing direct services to our military families. Innovative business thinking and a commitment to doing what's right for the communities they feel privileged to serve has been a hallmark of their company. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking our Armed Services YMCA San Diego Community Partner of the Year. Real service, real savings. How about, how about 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Geico Military has received the Community Partner of the Year Award. Unfortunately, Jenny uh, De La Serna, the uh, event marketing and military liaison ca cannot be with us tonight, but she uh, sends her regards and her thank you for being in partnership with the Armed Services YMCA. So thank you again. Yeah, I, hope the guy, I, I thought the Geico Gecko would be here. <laughs> yeah, she... <laughs> She had a, a gecko gig, so she couldn't gecko make it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Philip. And Sam Miller will go ahead and now present our Susan B. Davidson Award. Thank you, Tim, and welcome, everyone. It's nice to see everyone's faces. Uh, the Susan B. Davidson Award is one of the Armed Services YMCA's most prestigious awards. In honor of its namesake, it's presented to a volunteer who has demonstrated significant long-term commitment and given exceptional service to the San Diego Armed Services YMCA. Like the Admiral St. George Award, it's, it's not necessarily presented on a yearly basis. Tonight's awardee is not unlike those before him in his dedication to the mission of Armed Services YMCA. Following a decade, decades long career of serving our country in the US Navy and with various military contractor post, in, post active duty, Dick Everett joined the Board of Management in 2001. During his time with the Armed Services YMCA San Diego, Dick has served in almost every capacity as an active and engaged board member, board of management and committee member. He's been a tireless volunteer, a cheerleader, a donor, a mentor for new board members, and always has an encouraging word for the staff. Dick's love for the military and the families we support is evident in the way he continues to show up and lead through service to others, including this morning. Thank you, Dick. 
Uh, please join me in congratulating Richard Everett as our 2020 recipient of the Susan B. Davidson Award. They're here. They're here. Well deserved. So just a, just a quick moment there. I do want to thank the Zabel Foundation. Congratulations. And to Geico, thank you so much. And to Captain Dick Everett, who's also an emeritus member and one of my mentors and a mentor of this entire organization to our board. We're extremely grateful for your service to our country and to the Armed Services YMCA. You continue to serve in so many capacities. Um, so thank you and congrats. Thank you. I'm uh, much honored and very much appreciate the board selection. It's very kind of you. So one of our, our next is the unveiling of the, uh, the recognition wall. And it, some of you may remember Michelle Brown, one of our staff members who sadly, um, uh, unfortunately passed away um, while she worked at the organizations. One of her last projects uh, to work on was the recognition wall. I'm proud to say that that project has come together uh, today. And it is, we're trying to look for a different name than wall because wall is not necessarily something that conveys the message that, the, that we wanna say to our donors and to our supporters of the organization. Um, it's a piece of our history and of our supporters, uh, a legacy. We stand on great shoulders. Um, many of you have given so much to this organization, not just your time, but funds to support our programs and services. That said, Anna's gonna go ahead and show us a short uh, one to two minute video here. The Armed Services Y San Diego has provided programs and services to our military community for over 100 years. We are grateful to our dedicated staff, passionate volunteers, and the generous support of our donors that make this all possible. Today, we celebrate you. This wall is a tribute and a symbol of our gratitude to the legends of our past and to those who stand behind us today to strengthen our military family. We appreciate you and all you have done to support our military. My name is William Enriquez. I've been in the Navy 22 years. Uh, I currently have one of my kids using the Achievement Academy, which is a tons of help for me and my family because my wife is currently working. I go to work as well. so. It allows us the, the ability to have our kid be able to log in and participate with his classes like all the other kids are doing right now. I've also used uh, the YMCA a couple of times for a lot of father-daughter dances, which will build great memories for, for me and my two daughters. So I have pictures from the last four or five years of, of all the father-daughter dances that we've been to. So I'm really appreciative of, of what the program provides to military families. My name is Dave Gieber. I want to take this opportunity to share with you some of the reasons I support the San Diego Armed Services YMCA. My background includes 30 plus years of service in the Navy, and I also had the opportunity to serve as the board president at the Armed Services YMCA. The ASYMCA focuses on making military life easier for the young enlisted person and their family by offering a variety of programs and activities to the families. In today's military, many of the junior enlisted are married and have families they must leave often for extended deployments. What happens to these families when their spouse is overseas for six to seven months or longer? I found that the Armed Services YMCA was filling a critical role in supporting family members. With the ongoing support of the ASYMCA, military members are assured their family needs are being addressed in their absence. This allows the deployed member to be able to better focus on the task at hand, knowing all is well at home. For these reasons and many more, I have chosen to donate my time and financial support to this very worthwhile cause that shows fantastic results every day. I would encourage each of you to take the time to learn more about the San Diego Armed Services YMCA and ways that you might be able to participate. It has truly been an exciting experience for me, and I am sure you would enjoy the opportunity to see all the wonderful services that we provide to our military families. Thank you, Armed Okay, a special thank you to Anna Breeze, who's really put together this entire event for us so far. So thank you, Anna.
And uh, thank you, Dave Gebert and all of those folks um, who helped bring this together. Um, just a quick year in review, as I like to call it, as the executive director. Um, it was early March where the organization started to meet and determine um, where we should go with the pandemic and COVID-19 and lots of uh, supporters and challenging times out there. And our staff came together and the first idea was to create online education programming. I'm proud to say that came from a junior staff member and we did it. Uh, it was an idea that a junior staff member had and within a day, two days, we built the ASY studio and we stood up ASY programming. And we continued to make iterations in that programming um, to create a platform or sign on to a platform which allowed the kids to learn and it created connection for the children at home. And so it was fantastic team members in our family youth enrichment department that made that possible. Um, today, we do have programming actively going on with the Achievement Academy. Uh, so we are bringing kids in, in a very safe fashion, and we're executing programs uh, for those children at various ages, and it's uh, fantastic. We still have our ASY studio stood up, and we're also operating our Achievement Academy. And I'm also proud to say we're running our ranch, family ranch days at the Horse of the Sun Ranch. And let me just tell you that we had, we, we launched that program, 33 acres of, land, of uh, ranch, and we safely executed that program. We had 104 families on the waiting list within three minutes. So it's been a high demand, very successful, and very safely done with our team here at the Armed Services Y uh, San Diego. Um, again, we had volunteers come out, but we also pivoted to do a, we became a disaster response organization. Um, many nonprofits were shutting down and we had the opportunity to stand up and really come together as a team and come together for the community. So um, with, when we pivoted to our food distribution uh, drive-through, we did an online registration process, which means the families only had to wait 10 minutes. Uh, we call it distribution with dignity. We had the US Navy step up as volunteers and uh, we increased our food distributions by 261%. Today, that number has grown. We're serving over uh, 1,000 uh, military children every single week. And we just had another food distribution today um, here at Murphy Canyon, very, very fast and efficient. And one thing about COVID-19, I call it the sort of the silver lining of the pandemic is that it's proven that we can be extremely efficient as an organization. And there's just some things that we won't go back to. Um, but our staff continue to execute special events in the same fashion. Our Operation Holiday Joy uh, was still executed and we still set up many, many services and programs uh, to include telehealth and clinical counseling services. Um, and again, we'll continue to make iterations as we move into the future. Last year in 2020, we served 57,656 military members and their families. It's just an amazing, amazing number, but it's not the number that counts, it's the lives that we've touched. And Admiral Herring spoke about it earlier um, this organization is not a building. It's not just a mission statement. It's made up of a fantastic board of directors, emeritus members, countless volunteers that are dedicated, and an amazing, amazing staff. I have to say that our titles for this organization are just for the outside. On the inside, when you peel back the layers, what you find is dedicated professionals at every single level who are continuously improving this organization. Often I get thanked and acknowledgement for building an outstanding team. But I have to say there's a degree of luck that came together um, as you look at the screen or you, you see the staff and see the board that we've assembled. I'm so deeply humbled um, by our supporters, the board of management, and this amazing team that comes together each and every day to make the lives of our military members just a little easier or strengthen those lives. Um, I would mention some of you as I see you today and uh, uh, to be candid, um, there's just too many people to thank. So um, as we move into the future, our vision, our strategic plan continues to uh, build a center for military excellence here at Murphy Canyon um, that will move us from 5,400 square feet of footprint to 17,750 square foot of footprint. But again, it's not a building. It's a location that'll exponentially provide exponential programs and services to our military members and their families. And it'll continue on to the next 100 years. So this isn't as fancy as our last, you know, 100 year celebration, but it's just as meaningful. And it may be even more meaningful because moving through a pandemic is extremely stressful. Um, yet our staff, through your support, 
rose to the occasion. And I just want to thank you now uh, for all that you've done and, and all that we're going to continue to do as we move forward. Thank you. I got one, one applause from Sandy Purden. <laughs> yeah, I got here. And Ken's out there too. So thank you everyone. And uh, with that said, we're gonna move on to our favorite, uh, favorite part of this event, which is our board installation. One of the most significant part. And I can't believe we have to wait a whole year to hear Judge, uh, Judge Gill's jokes, but here we are. We're gonna move forward with our board installation um, with one of our great Eagles who also served in the military, Judge Gill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you for affording me this honor once again this year. Uh, I'm also uh, unofficially sort of the uh, court uh, jester uh, for this organization and others where I serve. So let me discharge that duty and then we'll get down to the more serious business of uh, administering the oath to the new members. Um, I have two quick uh, short little stories. Um, a struggling author had uh, submitted uh, a manuscript to a publisher and he hadn't heard anything for a while so he contacted the publisher and asked about what the reaction was to his manuscript and the publisher said well you know it's really quite good. I, I enjoyed it but uh, we only publish works by writers with well-known names. And he thinks for a minute, he said, well, that's no problem. My name's Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me try another. <laughs> now, mother asked her son, uh, what did your dad say uh, when you wrecked the new car? And the son, well, can I leave out the swear words? And she said, well, please. He didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. All right. Been, been there, done that. Well, I, most stand-up comedians, I guess, will say one out of two. No, now it's in the serious business. Uh, it is uh, each year the governance committee reviews the uh, composition of the board and uh, develops a slate of officers and board members for both the board and the advisory committee. And I think uh, part of the genius of our organization over the years has to uh, have been to have a real rich mix of continuing leadership, continuing mentorship and guidance. But uh, we uh, instill some new leadership, new thinking, new initiatives by bringing new folks uh, onto our boards and our committees. And so uh, I will now install the new board members uh, who are present with us tonight. I've been commissioned to do so. Uh, and it's been my pleasure to do so over the years. So the uh, new members to the board of management will be Lynn Kelly, Larry Sheehan, Phyllis Barber, Daryl Eidler, Mary Mills Kennedy, Craig Turley, Victor Perez, and Dustin Serrano. As a member of the Board of Management, you'll be responsible for evolving local operating policy, developing short and long range plans, interpreting the Armed Services YMCA to the local community. And we used to say that we were one of the best kept secrets in the community. That was not necessarily a good thing, but uh, I think over the years that's changed a bit and we raised our profile a little bit. Also assisting, of course, in the financial development of the association, that's vital to the vitality and uh, energy of any organization, uh, and enabling the branch to carry out its responsibilities to the local community. We are and have always been proud to claim to be the flagship of the Armed Services Y program. So for those of you who are present, I'll ask you to raise your right hand. Uh, do you promise to carry out these responsibilities to the best of your ability? If so, 
please reply, I do. I do. I do. And by the authority vested in me as the installing officer, I hereby declare you to be duly elected members of the San Diego Armed Services YMCA Board of Management. Moving on, then, it's my pleasure to honor and honor to conduct the installation of the officers of the Board of Management. And the officers are Daryl Idler, President, Nancy Lazarski, First Vice President, Captain Denise Stitch, Second Vice President, John Beer as Treasurer, and Larry Sheehan as Secretary. You have been selected by your peers to provide leadership to the board because of your demonstrated interest in and devotion to the welfare of the men and women of the armed forces. Your belief in the principles of the Lions, CA movement, and your leadership capability. So again, if you'll raise your right hands, those of you who are present, do you promise to carry out these duties to the best of your ability? If so, please reply, I do. I do. All right, then by the authority of the Vested in me as the installing officer, you are duly installed as officers of the Board of Management for the year 2021. Another part of the strength of our uh, organization is that we maintain the presence, the guidance, the inspiration of long standing supporters uh, through uh, asking folks to serve on our advisory committee for the Board of Management. And uh, those uh, folks uh, will include Deborah Bell, James Chatfield, Admiral Bud Edney, Dave Ebert, Jerry Kinnick, Gary Miller, Gail Miller, excuse me, and Gail Niffenhoff. So they will uh, will continue to capture the, the uh, their vital interest and in, in support of our organization by asking them to serve on the advisory committee. So I think uh, we'll have a round of congratulations and applause for all of those who've just been installed and uh, wish them uh, all the best. And thank you for affording me this uh, continuing honor. Congratulations to all. Thank you. Thank you so, very Mr. much. Mr. President, before you, before you go, can I have 10 seconds? I for, absolutely forgot something, and I just don't want to go without saying before we leave. I yield to the gentleman from the South. Thank you. I, there is one, <laughs> one, one particular person I failed to recognize, um, and I realize at the end of this event um, to, to not do so um, is a, a total misjustice. Um, but I want everybody um, to congratulate and um, pay a little bit of uh, thank you to Phyllis Barber. Amen. Um, I, I don't, I mean, from the day I got involved in this organization, um, Phyllis has been a charge to be reckoned with. Um, there is no doubt that the success of the organization over the course of time in which I have been involved is a direct reflection on Phyllis's efforts on a day-to-day -day basis um, in continued support of the military and uh, those that we serve. So I, I'm, I, I'm sorry I didn't do that, but Phyllis, um, you, you are a, um, a hero in my book um, and I thank you for all of your support and I'm so glad to see that you're gonna join the board and continue to work with us. I yield the position to the new president, congratulations, Cheryl, and the new staff. Yeah, here, here for Phyllis. Well done. Yeah, Admiral, I really appreciate that. Well, thank you again, Judge Gill, and uh, thank you, Admiral, for your comments. I have to say, um, if it hadn't been for my um, acquaintance with Phyllis going back 15 years ago, I guess, I don't think I would be here today. Uh, she marks the quality of the organization and the determination to serve our military community. And so uh, I'm just proud and uh, happy to be able to serve in the future alongside of her. Um, I wanna also congratulate all the rest of the people that have become uh, board members, uh, officers and advisory committee members and uh, an official capacity welcoming you to the Armed Services 
YMCA of San Diego. Um, I am extremely, um, I'm actually overwhelmed, but I'm extremely excited uh, to be working with you uh, in this mission and making the, the Y stronger, uh, which in some cases doesn't seem possible. It's so strong from my perspective, but I do see the talent surrounding it and the, uh, and the backbone of it and uh, its history, allowing it to be even stronger than it is today. So I think, uh, I don't know that there's anything else, Tim, on the, on the schedule that I uh, missed or that we missed collectively. If there is, uh, please step forward, anyone. And if not, uh, I will drop the gavel, so to speak, and, and uh, sign off. But is there anything else we need to deal with? Uh, there is one last piece, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. Um, the Zabel Foundation, uh, the recipient of our Vice Admiral St. George Award, um, thanks to the, the, the work of Phyllis, I'm sorry, of Philip Samuelly, um, did I say Phyllis? Um, <laughs> actually made a matching gift uh, for the organization of $100,000, um, which... Uh, it expires or ends on January 31st, so it's coming up. Um, you can, if, you, if you're so interested or so inclined, you can go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot Lee, L-Y, so B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash uh, A-S-Y match, and we're going to go ahead and email that out to everyone, and the, it must be a new donor to the organization. So you can make a donation, it'll be a matching dollar for dollar, uh, so far, we're, we're right around $85,000, uh, thanks to the Board of Management and our donors and our staff. We've done a good job raising funds thus far. We're at $85,000 for the match. We can go to uh, $100,000. Again, it's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash A-S-Y match, and that'll bring you to the page. We'll go ahead again and email that out to you. But a special thanks to the Zabel Foundation, also our good friends um, even in this Zoom today. You know who you are who made uh, extreme donations to really give us a good head start on this. I um, just want to thank you uh, publicly for your tremendous uh, support of the organization. Um, I want to let you know that I, I signed every single donor thank you letter since 2014 uh, with a personal message because every single donor, large or small, we use those gifts to the best, best of our ability. And uh, we thank you for your tremendous support and faith and the staff to execute the programs and services in the best way possible for our military members. Um, I don't want to overstep uh, the discussion with Daryl Eidler, our new board president. So thank you, Daryl. Uh, welcome aboard. I'm excited to work with you and the board of management. Um, I know you're going to be an outstanding leader uh, to the organization. And uh, like you said, we can't replace Admiral Len Herring. We certainly can't replace Phyllis Barber. And uh, Daryl, I look forward to continue to work with you um, to strengthen our military families. Well, thank you, Tim, and thank all of you. And Admiral, uh, I hope you don't regret the decision to give me your private phone number. Because <laughs> I never, because I'm going to use it. I can guarantee you that. So with that, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> with that said, um, and uh, lots of excitement for the future and um, and the team, I want to just say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tonight. Uh, all of you that are watching and uh, commenting right now on uh, on the chat box as well, uh, we appreciate your participation, your continued support, and uh, we're going to turn 2021 into a year to remember uh, and make 2020 the year that we remember for the successes and we don't deal with any of the other things that have happened. But we're moving forward. We're driving in the windshield, not the rearview mirror. So thank you all and have a good evening, Tim. Um, final word. We, are, uh, we need a motion to adjourn. Ah, I will make such a motion or call for the motion, I should say. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There be no opposition. We are adjourned. Be safe, gentlemen and ladies, and we'll see you soon in person, I hope. God bless. <laughs>